All right, guys, welcome to the uh, little episode we've got for you today. Um, I'm Nick Andre, and I'm going to be going over some of the technology that I have to um, do kind of home blood tests and things like that. As aspiring citizen scientists, it's been really cool to explore the technology that's out there and to get a handle of what that can offer us uh, it, as we explore the functionality of the body. Uh, I posted this on Twitter, but I recently acquired this. It's called an Abexis Piccolo. It's a point of care uh, blood testing system. And this is my dog, Oliver. Uh, it's a point of care blood testing system. And basically it will allow you to run blood tests, the kind you'd get in your doctor's office. And it's got some interesting ones too. So it's got a basic lipid panel, um, which, so for some of you who are familiar with Dave Feldman and the, uh, the cardio check he uses, it, it has uh, a little bit better range. So one of the problems with the cardio check is that it only goes down to about 50 milligrams a deciliter on triglyceride. And oftentimes carnivores and other people eating very low carb diets will, will see lower numbers than that when fasting, which uh, this will actually go down to, I believe, 20 milligrams per deciliter on triglyceride, which is kind of cool. It also has built-in quality control. It uses kind of a, a reagent disc that I'll show you to run the test. Uh, but basically, it's just kind of a touchscreen interface. Let me uh, plug this in for you. So uh, taking you around the back here, it's got kind of a, a series of USB ports and things and uh, power supply there. It's even got a CD drive in its butt there. Um, but basically this is the Abexis. It'll take a little bit to warm up, but basically you've got a touch screen here, you've got a power button, and you've got uh, a receipt printer in the back. It also supports um, getting the data off of it, so there's a USB Type-B female there, and a uh, series of USB type A ports. Um, these in theory I believe it supports other accessories like printers and barcode scanners. But that's what we got here. So uh, when it boots up you'll see it's performing the internal quality control checks uh, and then it'll go into warming. So it has a, uh, a tray here which is used to incubate the, uh, the sample as you're running a test. But basically the interface is a pretty straightforward touchscreen, so you've got an um, interface like this, and you can uh, recall the last disk, and it'll show you the details of the last test, which in this case was a lipid panel. This is not a lean mass hyperresponder lipid panel, but basically it'll, uh, it'll go through all the, the different parameters, and you can scroll through it here. The other option you have is to print it, and it will scroll out a uh, quite a large piece of parchment here with all the information on it out at the top. And so the top section here is the results. And then the quality control information that tells you all about, I believe so it's a spectrophotometer, so it's got a series of uh, wavelengths that it reads at, so it goes through and double checks them on control regions. I think the disc has built-in control. So so you can see it's still incubating here. So um, it's just got a basic menu in here, a couple of parameters. You can set up a printer. You can configure units and reference ranges, volume, and uh, there's some options for running controls and things like that. The other interesting thing is you can transmit data, so it gives you a series of uh, transmission options. XML is probably the most useful to most of us programmers, but I was able to... Someone's probably getting in a huge amount of trouble for this, but this unit was actually shipped to me with, uh, I think, about 400 tests in it, and so I basically dumped all of those and then uh, made some posts on Twitter, which I'll link to, that uh, talk about like the intercorrelations between various things in lipid panels, but it was kind of interesting to see that data. And then uh, I can dump my own data as well, so when you run a test you basically key in a patient ID. I'll walk you through that in a second, and uh, it'll run the, the disk with a sample in it. So here we got a, a little close-up of the analyzer here. Um, basically you've got uh, an analyze button here, so uh, if you click this it'll open the disk drawer here, and basically this is a uh, reagent disk here. And so it's kind of a nifty idea. They, they have to be refrigerated, so it'll have to be um, held at 
uh, I believe between two to eight degrees Celsius for the entire time that um, they're shipped and everything. So it was actually shipped to me in some giant uh, thermal boxes. But basically, it's got a little inlet there, if you can see that, and um, it requires a hundred microliter sample of lithium heparin blood. Uh, so basically, you can just draw that and then pretty much immediately load it in. It uh, doesn't really want you to wait too long with the sample. It doesn't recommend refrigerating it before you uh, actually run the test. But basically, you uh, insert your micropipette tip in there, and you uh, when you get up to that line there, I don't know if you can see that. Um, when you get up to that line there, uh, that's when you're you're actually full. So it has, I believe, uh, you can see all these wells on the outside. So it's got a barcode that indicates to the machine what uh, assay it's running. And then it's got a series of these windows here. I believe some of these are controls. Um, this is a used disc, and I believe that's where it reads the blood directly for uh, uh, hemolysis and uh, lipemia and things like that. So... Basically, you can just insert the disc in like that once you have. Uh, you can insert the disc like that once you've loaded the blood in, and then you basically hit close, and it'll go ahead and analyze it. I don't know what it's going to do with this thing. It's probably going to complain to me that it's used. Enter age. I'm 27 now, Jesus. I'm white. One. Yeah, so this will run this sample anyways. If I hit cancel, it'll eject the disc out. And so it'll take about uh, 12 or so minutes to run an assay. Um, but basically that's, that's kind of all she wrote. So you, you, you get these shipped to you in packs of 10. So for the, this is the Biochemistry Panel Plus. So if we go back, we can uh, see the, uh, if we go back, so I believe this is the Biochemistry Panel Plus. So this is basically a comprehensive metabolic panel. So it's got glucose, uh, bun, blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, uric acid, I don't remember exactly what all these are. Anyway, so basically, one of the, so the bummer is it does do CRP on a couple of these assays, so the Biochemistry Panel Plus does have that, but it's only a low sensitivity CRP, so it won't detect anything lower than five. Um, that is one of the downsides to this machine, is you basically get a fixed panel of assays, you only get a, a, uh, a series of panels that you can run, and it's not extensible. You can't run a, a different assay like we can with a, a, an ELISA. But you, you do get some interesting things. GGT is particularly interesting because that's a pretty good uh, tracker of uh, metabolic syndrome and things like that, liver dysfunction. So having that's pretty interesting. And uh, obviously we have, uh, this is me, we've got elevation of bun uh, due to the high protein intake, which is kind of interesting. And I didn't turn it on for this test, but I believe it will give you a It'll calculate the estimated glomular filtration rate as well with this test. So next time I run it, we'll uh, get that data there. Um, so this will do a series of different assays. This is the comparison table, but you've got your comprehensive metabolic panel, BMP. It's got a liver panel plus. A lot of these are for diagnostics of things like jaundice or other liver dysfunction or kidney dysfunction things. Uh, the it has, uh, the electrolyte panel could be somewhat interesting, although we tend to find that a lot of these tests in particular don't tend to vary a lot in healthy people. And so basically the two that I have are the lipid panel, which covers the uh, cholesterol, HDL, and triglyceride, and then it calculates all the other bits there. And then you've got the biochemistry panel plus, which includes basically a comprehensive metabolic panel. It doesn't include chloride, but it does include GGT and it does include low sensitivity CRP. So this would be interesting if you were uh, helping people that are not yet healthy, but um, for most carnivores, we'll need a high sensitivity ELISA to get anything that's interesting. Uh, so we've been exploring some of the kind of options for what's available to run tests. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those in upcoming videos, but basically th this will get you some interesting tests. I like the expanded range lipid panel and the uh, 
Biochemistry Panel Plus could be interesting, especially for evaluating relative health of people and improvements or changes. Um, for more complex tests, we'll probably end up needing an ELISA. So we'll, um, there's the possibility that we can use semi-auto or full automatic chemistry analyzers. The semi-automatic chemistry analyzers are like spectrophotometers that will read in, they'll suck in some liquid and then read it out. Uh, we'll, it's not clear exactly what the compatibility is with different assays. So one of the HSCRP assays that I found was actually required, um, it required multiple readings while the sample was incubated over a period of time. And I don't think that that is easy to do on a semi-automatic chemistry analyzer because I think the sample has to be continuously incubated. It may be possible, but I'm, I'm still trying to ascertain. The company ended up recommending that I get a full auto chemistry analyzer, which they have some smaller versions, but I assume that's like a billion dollars. So um, the, the dog is coming to investigate. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look. In all likelihood, the ELISA is probably going to be the easiest thing to do in a home laboratory. The, I think the unit cost may be a little bit higher, but it's, it's possible to run. The, only, the main downside to the ELISA is that we have to run about 40 different as, uh, samples at the same time in order to make it kind of cost effective. So that's why my entire freezer is full of blood samples. Okay, so I just used this uh, micro pipette here to pipette 100 milliliters of blood into the disc and you can see that it's all lined up on that line and I think that means we're good to go. Next. Close drawer to analyze sample. All right, the uh, cardio check results are in. No one to show this today if you might kick me off the LMHR group, but I'm only about four and a half hours fasted, so my trigs are up a little bit, but my calc LDL is only 168. Woo, Jesus. Recall last disc. The result, cholesterol 288, HDL 66. And it trigs 72, LDL 208 calculated. That actually diverges quite a bit from, let's see, 288. HDL comes in slightly lower. 